Good afternoon, students. Yesterday, we have discussed about the introduction of biotechnology, out of which we have covered definition, types of biotechnology, important steps of biotechnology, and important tools required for recombinant biotechnology. In the chapter number 11, part 2, today we will discuss about the DNA isolation. This is also known as isolation of genetic material. And this is the important part of practical examination also. And a major experiment is designed on this topic. In this topic, you can see, we can use the different source material for DNA isolation. Suppose, you can use source of DNA is bacteria. You can use plants as a source of DNA, you can use fungi as well. So if you want to isolate the DNA from the cell, then you will have to follow a standard protocol that is also the part of your practical examination and we will discuss about that later on. We know that bacterial cell is covered by a thick non-living structure that is the cell wall. Inside the bacteria you can see this is the genetic material DNA inside the cell. So prior to isolate the DNA from the cell, you need to degrade cell wall. Degradation of cell walls and it requires different types of enzymes. Such as, if you want to degrade the cell wall of bacteria, then it requires lysozyme enzyme. If you want to isolate the DNA from plant cell, then you will have to degrade the cell wall and it requires cellulase and pectinase enzyme while cell wall of fungi is made of chitin and to degrade the chitin then you will have to use chitinase enzyme. So these are the important enzymes required for the degradation of cell wall of bacteria or plant or animals. As I have discussed about the enzymes, lysozyme, cellulase, pectinase, chitinase, these are the required enzymes. RNA of the cellular content, content is also digested by using the ribonuclease enzyme. It is also known as RNAs. And the present protein can be removed by using protease enzymes. Purified DNA ultimately precipitated out after the addition of chilled ethanol. So we will perform this activity in our biology lab by using the papaya. It has a standard protocol and it is also the part of measure practical. You need to write it into the practical record. Precipitated DNA is separated and removed by spooling method. Spooling method, you can just compare this with Maggi. When you use the spike for the removing of or you 
need to coil the maggi similarly spooling process is used you can see the picture precipitated thread like dna is present in this test tube and this round shaped structure is used to remove this one this is the dna and these are the threads of dna now separation and isolation of dna fragments a special technique is used for this purpose and this technique is used in the biotechnology and genetic engineering and name of the technique is gel electrophoresis so dear student as you isolate the dna it is very long very heavy and large amount of dna is separated prior to use this technique you need to cut the dna in the smaller fragments and these fragments are known as rflps we will discuss it about chapter number 6 so the cutting of dna by restriction endonuclease results in the form of fragments of dna and these fragments are known as rflp since the dna fragments are negatively charged they can be separated by forcing them to move towards anode under an electric field through a medium or matrix so a machine is used that is known as gel electrophoretic machine or unit this is the picture given in your book figure 11.3 and a medium is used here it is made of agarose gel and the source of agarose gel is gracile area and gelidium that is already discussed in class 11th these are the smaller hole and known as wells where we will fill the sample dna and you know high vo high voltage electricity is attached here and dna is negatively charged it will travel towards the positive end and that will be the anode when we will attach the battery here so most commonly used matrix is agarose so which gel is used in electrophoresis technique then you need to give the answer agarose it is a natural polymer extracted from seaweed gracile area and gelidium dna fragments separate according to their size through sieving effect you can see in the gel base there is a very small pores present in that and dna fragments passes through this and this effect is called sieving effect provided by the agarose gel hence the smaller the fragment size farther it moves so you can see in the base medium the fragments which are towards the right right end are smaller in size the separated fragments are visualized by staining them with ethidium bromide when you will fill the dna sample in the wells it is separated but you cannot see so you will have to add a special dye or special stain known as ethidium bromide by exposure to uv radiation still it is invisible so just put the base matrix in the ultraviolet radiation and it will look like purple blue fragments the separated bands of dna are cut out from the agarose gel and extracted from the gel piece this is called elution so this is the next part of the technique you can see this is known as electrophoretic unit 
these are the one two three and four these four are wells where we will fill the dna sample now electricity is passed in this portion you you know dna is negatively charged as the switch is on then dna will pass from well to this side its moment will depend on the size of dna fragments so you can see these are the smallest fragments these are the middle sized dna fragments and these are the heavier fragments near the wells so it is important part that is used here in the process of dna separation you can see this is the isolated dna fragment that is very large in size you need to cut this dna in the smaller fragments so we will use restriction endonuclease enzymes eco r first these enzymes will cut this dna in the smaller fragments and you can see these are the fragments of dna these dna fragments known as rflp restriction fragment length polymorphism some fragments will be smaller in size some fragments will be middle in size and there are some fragments which are larger in size so these are the rflps and you can see this is the sample dna now we will arrange the electrophoretic units the name of this unit is electro phoretic unit you can see these blue colored structures given in the figure is wells this is the well number 1 2 3 and 4 now we will fill the sample dna in these wells and a agarose gel base is used here as we will attach the electrophoretic unit to the high voltage battery then dna sample will move as you know dna fragments are negatively charged so dna fragments are negatively charged so it will move towards this direction smaller the size more will be the movement so you can see if the band is just towards the right end or you can say towards the anode it will be the smaller in the size this is the comparatively heavier and this is the heaviest this type of bands can be seen it shows the type of dna fragments found in the dna sample the first band towards the positive end or anode is smaller in size while the dna fragments which are towards the cathode side or near the wells are larger in size so you can see this is the separation of dna present in the dna sample and prior to this you have cut this large dna to the smaller dna fragments so this is all about the separation of dna from the cell and 
important experiment can be designed on this purpose and we will use the papaya plant to isolate the dna for isolation of dna so dear students this is the part 2 of chapter 11 tomorrow we will discuss about the another important tool vector what is the vector what are the features of the vector types of vectors so everything we will discuss this so try to learn this if you have any problem you can message me or call me and all the important facts regarding this will be discussed tomorrow thank you have a nice day